condition to adopt the final uh, Shelton Metropolitan Parks budget. Thank you, Commissioners. Do you want to hold your public hearing first, or do you want me to present first? Um, I think that we're ready for you to present first. Okay. Very good. The Shelton Metropolitan Park District has already held their first hearing regarding the preliminary budget. That was held on November 6th, and this would be the second hearing. Um, and the purpose for tonight's uh, discussion is to um, answer any questions you may have on the 2018 s &P budget, and also to request that you place resolution number 22-1217 on the December 4th, 2017 meeting agenda for reading and adoption of the final 2018 SMPD budget. Um, so at this point, I would simply ask if you have questions about the budget. I will note that um, the because of the county situation, they're looking at a potential um, levy shift that could impact SMPD, and we are aware of that, and we are planning accordingly. So although our budget you know, has some expenditures in there, we will be um, in contact with the county, and if, in fact, the SMPD is impacted by a levy shift, we will be addressing that issue with adjustments as we need to. Okay, and will that happen before the end of the year, or do um, we know? I don't know for sure how soon the county will know how those numbers are going to shake out, but we're, we're planning um, cautiously and carefully as we move ahead for 2018. Okay. So with that, um, are there any questions that either of you have about the 2018 s budget? Does it make sense? Anything doesn't make sense? I want to make sure there's no black holes here for you. So this looks like there's a little more income. A little bit. Uh -huh. And you said that they were considering a levy shift which may affect this. So basically, that's not taken into this consideration. It's that's correct. What we hopefully for, it doesn't. That's correct. It. What we budget for and what we levy is what we can um, legally request. But we understand that we don't always know how the the potential levy shift at the county could impact the SMPD. So although we may adopt a full budget, we are aware that it could be impacted by this. So we are we have contingency plans in place to make sure that we don't overexpend based on what we have available to us. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Were you finished? Yes. Uh, are there any members of the public that would like to comment on this issue? Um, see none. Do we do we need to vote to approve this? Do we vote at all right now? Uh, no. The the resolution SMPD twenty two twelve seventeen would go on to the December fourth meeting agenda. Okay. To adopt the SMPD budget for next year. The next business item we have is to talk about the levy certification. But this this item is simply to have the final budget hearing and to request that you place the budget approval on your December 4th agenda. Okay. Um, is there anything else before that? I mean, is this the consent agenda? I, I'm, I'm off on my, <laughs> my okay. schedule here. I apologize. Um, if, if you don't have any further questions on the budget. Okay, I, I'm, I see where I am. Then oh. I would request that you um, place this resolution on your December 4th agenda for reading and adoption of the final 2018 SMPD budget. Okay, and I believe that's acceptable. Okay, and so I will close the public hearing on that issue. Um, so next up is our consent agenda. Um, have you had an opportunity to? Yes, I have. Okay, could we have a reading of the consent agenda? Yes, voucher number 20 in the amount of $73,434.55. And we have minutes from October 2nd, 2017, October 30th, 2017, and November 6th of 2017. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda for the Metropolitan Park District. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. 
Um, so next up is a business agenda. I don't see anything under there, so we do have a an action agenda next. And that, once again, is Finance Director Nola Van Nudek. Thank you, Commissioners. This item is focusing on adopting the levy for 2018. And there are two pieces to this puzzle. There's the resolution that adopts the levy increase, and there is a 2018 levy certification. These are the documents that are required by the county by the end of November. Uh, so what we are requesting is first to make sure we've answered any questions you might have about the resolution or the levy certification. Any questions on that at all? None from me. I have no questions on that. Is there anyone from the public that would like to comment on this? Seeing none, um, is there a motion to adopt Resolution 21-1117? Yes, I make a resolution to adopt the resolution 21-1117. I'll second that motion. Any more discussion? For, first reading, first and final reading. Is that what you yes. wanted to do? Okay. We have resolution number SMPD 22-1217, a resolution of the city, I'm sorry, a resolution of the Shelton Metropolitan Park District adopting the budget for the year ending December 31, 2018. Yeah, just correcting the, the number, it's resolution number 21-1117. And that's adopting the um, increase in the capital and taxes. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion? I thought we just made the motion. Did we not make the motion? I did make the motion. You, you did, and she just read the resolution. Okay. So I think you just need to vote. So okay. <laughs> we got off, off schedule there. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion passes. Um, is there an administration report? We still have one more item. Oh my gosh. And that is to adopt the um, levy certification document. There's two separate pieces to this. There's adopting the resolution, which you just did. Okay. And there's adopting the levy certification document. That's the page on the back that specifies the actual dollar amounts of the regular levy and the administrative refund levy. Okay. And we just need you to adopt that levy certification in the amount of $490,270. Okay, is there any questions, any discussion no. on this? So you would like another motion? I would like to make a motion to approve the uh, levy certification and it looks like you said 490,270? Correct. Okay. I will second that motion. Is there any more discussion? Nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I passed it before we opposed it. <laughs> okay, so at this point, we are ready for administration report, which is. Nothing today. Okay, thank you very much. The next meeting will be Monday, December 4th, 2017 at 6 p.m. And this meeting is adjourned. At this point, I would like to call to order our regularly, regular City of Shelton Commission meeting. Would you please stand with me and recite the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner um, McDowell will not be with us tonight because of an illness, but she is going to be with us on a telecall to give her commission report. And so at this time, what we'd like to do is let her give her report first. And the Seahawks are not doing real well. If anybody wanted to know, it looks like it's almost two touchdowns to nothing. 
I'm going to guess there are people here that are taping the game. On what? I'm going to guess there are people here taping that game. Yeah, probably. probably don't want an update. It didn't look real good for the first few minutes. I'm here. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Hi, everybody. So you can give, give your commission report first. Well, I don't have much of a commission report for this week. Uh, yeah, are you still there? I'm here. Okay. So it's your turn if you had something to say. Okay. Okay. Um, hi. Hi. Sorry to miss the meeting tonight. Well, I have a. I don't have much of a commission report for this week, but I do want to read a letter. Okay. Um, I would like to make a statement of apology. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, I'm going to read this. I do. Okay, okay. Um, hi. Hi. Sorry to miss the meeting tonight. Oh, it's July. I'll, no, I'll let Jamie handle this. She's doing a much better job. Um, go ahead and turn off your, whatever you're watching. Turn off whatever you're watching in the background. All right. Um, I would like to make a statement of apology to the staff of the city of Shelton, to the citizens of Shelton, and to my supporters. Please forgive me. I am, un I am unable to make this meeting this evening due to health issues that have flared up recently. I've asked to be excused this evening from the commission meeting due to health issues. I want to apologize for my careless, thoughtless actions these past few years while in office. I apologize for not being honest in my position as commissioner. I would like to continue in my duties as a public servant. I will do the best I can to make amend and continue to serve the city government and the citizens of Shelton. I promise to work hard to gain your trust back. Thank you, Kathy McDowell, Commissioner of Finance. Thank you, Kathy McDowell. You're welcome. All right, next is Commissioner Moore's commission report. Yeah, I actually also have a statement to read in a couple of meetings this week, which I will go to um, afterwards. Recently, Shelton citizen J Jason Dejakup Coots made a public records request of communications by and between members of the Shelton City Commission. The results have been shocking and disappointing, as many of the conversations seem to show a pattern of illegal collusion regarding voting. I believe my records should undergo the same scrutiny. When I was elected to serve as city commissioner, I made a promise to always do the right thing for the people in Shelton. That's why I'm forwarding my own records, which I made them available online, and since then there is a website where everything is. Um, and self-reporting the few occasions that I, too, had commissioner-to-commissioner -commissioner conversations outside our scheduled meetings. The circumstances of um, my conversations can be explained and were not violations related to voting on specific matters. In fact, almost all are allowed topics, but in the best interest of the public, they still should not have occurred. I invite you to examine my communications and contact me if you have questions. I do apologize. I believe this matter proves beyond a doubt that our city has been long overdue for a change to a more transparent form of government, and I thank all who voted for the change to council. Our city deserves a fair and open council that can work together and move forward. Thank you, Jason, for bringing this into the light and his website is www.dangercup.com and I invite you to check out any of my communications there. And I'm, I'm open to criticisms or concerns about any of my communications. This week, um, tomorrow, I uh, will be attending a League of Women Voters meeting. The study topic this month is on the county budget. 
and I think that's a very um, timely issue. So if you are interested, they are a nonpartisan group that do serious studies of local and national government questions and problems. And then I have a meeting um, on Wednesday with the Peninsular Railway um, group, Lumberman's Museum group, um, to try uh, continue to con the efforts to make our um, railroad work here in the city as a great community development opportunity. And that's my week. Happy Thanksgiving. Tuesday, which is tomorrow, I will be having my weekly staff briefing. And I also have another meeting, actually, uh, just before that, where I'm on a board with other nonprofits like the United Way. And what we do is we look into funding for our local food banks. And so that completes my week, other than happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Now is the general public comment period. And so you, we have a three-minute opportunity. You must come and sign in and fill in the little form. And so if anyone would like to speak, this is the opportunity to do that. We have Debbie Simmons. Hi, I'm Debbie Simmons. I live up in Hillcrest. And I don't totally pay attention to everything that goes on in the city, but there are certain things I do pay attention to. And I have to say, Mayor Kranz, and Kathy, your behavior, your words, your discussions are disgusting. They're shameful. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves, and people think Shelton's a laughing stock. You've made it so. And I'm truly embarrassed that you are the lead of this city. Thank you. Next. Jason, Danger Cup Boots. Um, I thought it was very big with Tracy and I guess Kathy in a way. All right. Um, to see Tracy read a statement of apology before she was caught, not that she has anything to be caught about, but Kathy reading one after, I guess I'll give her half credit. Um, I wanted to read a few things off of my website, DangerCup.com, after giving you, Gary, the opportunity to set the record straight and you choosing not to, um, I'm going to fill the people in. Um, here's one from Gary. 60 million and growing, it's not about me. It's about campaign promises and options. Staff has never been told no. I don't trust them. Um, Gary, put the decision off until the new administrator. I don't trust them. Remember the half dollar sewer to nowhere out of ratepayers' money? Here's one, an illegal conversation between Kathy and Gary that is uh, just a heads up. I'm pretty sure beyond a shadow of a doubt, the city attorney will not be able to stop our votes for the in God we trust. I'm planning to vote for it. I'm deleting this, Gary says. Cool. Uh, here's one from Kathy. Actually, if the public was so concerned with this, there would be many, many more commission meetings, letter to the editor, editors would be written, comments would be put on the radio. Nobody cares about this dead thing, nobody. Um, how about, this is one from Kathy. Tracy gets more and more disgusting, trying to shame. Maybe someone should shame her. Here's one from Kathy. Totally understand why Trace, Tracy and Mike cannot stand Gary. I'm getting close to that point. I guess in closing, you don't need to thank me for my comments. Uh, I get thank yous every day from the citizens of Sheldon. Um, I do hope you have a nice Thanksgiving. There's a lot to be thankful for. I guess hopefully the outlook of Sheldon and I'm personally thankful for public disclosure loss. Thank you. Is there somebody else? There is Okay. Are we ready for the reading and consent agenda? Yes. Okay. 
Can we please have a reading of the consent agenda? Yes. Voucher numbered 15913 in the amount of $162.43. Vouchers numbered 799 through 934 and 15914 through 15934 in the amount of $645,945.83. Excuse me, $45. Voucher numbered 15939 in the amount of 6455 sorry $6,475.89. Vouchers numbered 15940 through 16034 in the amount of $268,271.03. So we have minutes from the special business meeting of October 17, 2017. Study session of October 23rd, 2017. Study session of October 30th, 2017. Business session of November 6th, 2017. And study session of November 13th, 2017. I move we, we approve the consent agenda as read. There's a motion to approve the consent agenda and I second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The agenda passes. We have a few items on the action agenda for tonight, and the first one is going to be uh, presented to us. It's uh, concerning some perfit, the permit fee schedule, and it will be presented to us by our city manager, Ryan Wheaton. Mayor and Commissioner, the title and agenda is a little off. It's just the fee schedule, so on your briefing, we've corrected it there. So what we are giving you now is the same fee schedule that we provided you last week with the red lines. So you have, I believe, a copy of the red line version and then also a clean up version. We can answer any questions you have. This is coming out of just the annual update of the fee schedule and also we needed to make the adjustments that you voted on a while back to change the building permit fees and transportation improvement fees. I have no questions. We discussed this issue last week. So are there any questions or comments from you, Commissioner Moore? I do have a comment on this. Um, as you know, I disagreed with the decision made on this, and when um, when the vote happened, I um, expressed my dismay and my suspicion that there had been collusion on this matter that affected the voting. After the information disclosed by the public records request, I believe that there is no longer any question of that. So I um, still disagree with this, and I protest this vote, and I, um, I don't know where we go from here. I suppose there are still two commissioners who can push this through, but I would say that there was obvious collusion and um, dishonesty involved in this vote. And that's my statement. And I, my comment is that's nonsense, but what we will do is I believe wait until our other fellow commissioner comes back to vote on this particular matter. Do we have time to do that? Yes, we do. Would you like to explain why it's nonsense? Well, because, you know, for one, is personal attacks. This is not a personal right. attack. Dude, it's a black and white. Uh, personal attacks are not what you call, um, I think, real beneficial to you or me. And you, we have voted on something in the past. We are bringing it forward at this point. And now is a point where we either vote yes or no. If we have a one vote yes, one vote no, that's really all that there is there. So, so you are comfortable standing on your record and the records that here, have been uncovered yeah, yeah, of collusion well, for this the vote. Here's the deal. Let me let me put it straight. The quotes that were read tonight. Stop. The quotes that were read tonight were 18 months ago. Uh, no. Yeah. Well, maybe well, the ones that well, were read, well, now, Gary. Now, the quotes that were read were 18 months ago. Okay. So, being accused of lying and being accused of co colluding to do something is we have been turned into the PDC, and I welcome the PDC's findings. 
I welcome the PDC's findings concerning anything I did and concerning this issue, calling me a liar is, uh, what do you call, I say out of order. I did not say the word liar. Which was it? If what the shoe fits. What? If the shoe fits. Now, what word did you use? Did you not call me a liar? I did not call, her, call you a liar. Conclusion. Well, anyway, we can have this family chat all we want, but the deal is we have the work of the people that we are doing, and again, I will be happy to see the PDC's findings concerning everything that we've done, and that is my statement on that. Now, back to our city manager on this issue. Do we have time to wait to vote on this? I, we need to have it done by before the budget's done, so there is time to do it. Because we, it looks like we have one yay and one nay, so. You don't have a motion yet, so. I know. But, yeah, so I'm just guessing, unless uh, we're going to change our minds. So, we have an issue, and we have two commissioners. Okay. So, I believe that we have to either bring this back or whatever. I would suggest. I mean, yeah. we can have the vote. We can vote and then just be, you know, tie or something. I think it would be ridiculous to hold the vote right now. We obviously need another commissioner here, and possibly you will reread your notes in the meantime. Okay. So, we probably won't vote on this at this time. And so what we're going to do is postpone this until we have our other commissioner present. Okay. Thank you very much. Moving on to item number two. This is uh, called an Pure Air Filter Media Vendor Award form, and it's going to be our Public Works Director, Craig Gregory, that's going to bring that forward. Thank you, Mayor and Commissioner Moore. Uh, as we spoke last week, uh, the purchase for the odor scrubber media is needed at Front Street and uh, the main treatment plant. Uh, we did go to a formal bid and got uh, three quotes back, uh, with Pure Air being the lowest at 43165 which will come out of the general operations budget uh, for the sewer department. So if you have any additional questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer those for you. I have none. I don't have any either. And I move to approve the purchase of the Pure Air Filtration Media and sign the vendor award form. Unfortunately, at this time, we do have to open up to public comment. If anybody would have anything they'd like to say about this filter, now would be the opportunity. We have no one signed up for this. Seeing nobody signed up for that, now we can uh, move forward with a motion. I made the motion. Okay. There's a motion, and I second that motion. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Next is we have uh, a report from our financial director, Nola, and uh, we will turn this over to her at this time. Thank you, Mayor Commissioner Moore. This is your second uh, reading of ordinance number 1909-1117. And the purpose of this is to um, increase ad valorem taxes in the city of Shelton for 2018. And it is also to adopt the city of Shelton 2018 levy certification. So at this stage, we need a second reading of ordinance 1909-1117. And then any questions you might have, I'd be happy to answer those. Any questions or comments? I have none. I have none either, but it is another item that we need to open up to the public if they would like to speak about this specific item. Is there anyone signed up to speak about this? Jason Coots. Okay. This one's kind of quick, but I was for this, this issue that I was hoping to hear that the uh, tax increases are going to build up a fund for the PDC fines, like I mentioned last time, that I guess you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So I believe at this time we would have a second reading of this ordinance. Ordinance number 1909-1117, the ordinance of the city of Shelton. 
Washington increasing the ad valorem taxes in the city of Shelton for calendar year 2018. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I move um, that we approve ordinance number 1909-1117, increasing ad valorem taxes in the city of Shelton for calendar year 2018 and adopt the city of Shelton 2018 levy certification. Okay, and I second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, opposed? The motion passes. Next is a, a conversation about art. And so our art director, <coughs> Mark Ziegler, is gonna come and talk to us about that. Thank you, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, bringing to you today the recommendations from the Shelton Arts Commission for the Shelton, the S Shelton Civic Center Rotating Art Gallery. We have two artists um, in a recommendation today. First is Teresa Marie Stahl Cowley, and that's four pieces from her, and Hilma Josel, four pieces from her as well, total eight. Uh, with your approval, the art will be installed tomorrow and in place through January 31st, 2018. <coughs> Okay, does anyone from the public wants to talk about this? Yeah. Seeing none, hearing none, is there any questions or comments for Mark? I would just like to say how much I enjoy the art and how bare our walls look without it. So I never like this lax <laughs> period. So I'm excited to see them, yeah. So um, that's all for me. All right, so at this time, is there a motion to approve the Civic Center Art uh, gallery, rotating art gallery. I move to approve the Shelton Arts Commission recommendations for the Civic Center rotating art gallery to be displayed from, uh, I guess, November through January 31st, 2018. Okay, I second that motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. I'd like to turn the meeting over now to our city manager on any future or uh, any city uh, reports you may We do have. have a few things. First, I wanted to ask Craig Gregory to come up and deliver an update on an important award that his team received last week. So, happy to announce uh, that back in August, we applied for a couple of grants from the Transportation Improvement Board, and last Friday, uh, we got word of the Arterial Preservation Program grant that we put in for uh, for the amount of, we did put in an amount of $530,000 roughly uh, for Turner Street that would reconstruct that roadway from 1st to 16th and also on uh, 16th from Turner to Harvard. And Transportation Improvement Board uh, encourages you to put that into sections. So we had three different sections within that. It was the hill portion from 1st to 7th, and then from 7th to 16th, and also on 16th uh, were the three sections. Uh, unfortunately, we were not awarded the entire grant. Uh, the second section was the only one that was awarded uh, from 7th to uh, 16th. So the worst part of that, uh, the pavement rating was not uh, adequate to award the other two sections. Uh, so we did end up with uh, roughly $270,000 to repave uh, from 7th to 16th on Turner with a 10% match uh, for that project. So we will be bringing that forward uh, for approval. And out of the West region, which we are part of, uh, there were five projects that were funded within that program uh, at a total of 2.1 uh, million. So we roughly got about 10% of that uh, through the five projects that were funded. Uh, but more exciting, uh, the urban arterial program grant that we put in for, um, also back in August, that we did uh, initial 10% design that we started uh, back in June. We have been looking at this project since uh, January when we brought uh, a consultant on, uh, Steve Gorchester Performance Plane um, Consulting, 
to help us out with this and, and went forward with the 10% design, like I said, in June. And we were awarded uh, just a little over $3.3 million for the Downtown Connector Project, which is Alder Street from 1st all the way to C Street at the top of the hill. Um, that came with a uh, 70, that was a 70% grant, uh, so 30% will be covered by the partners, uh, which we are happy to have a relationship again with, PUD3, uh, Mason Conservation District, and uh, MTA, which we'll put in towards that uh, match fund, and then the rest will come out of either TIF, uh, transportation impact fees, or transportation benefit district funds to cover the rest and the total project is estimated to cost uh, just short of $5 million. So uh, we are looking right now, uh, the commission approved the design of that back in October. So we have been moving forward with that. We are looking at 50% uh, design completion by the 1st of December and completion of design by the middle of February, which we will couple that and bid that together with Sewer Basin 3 and hopefully go to construction sometime in late spring, uh, early summer uh, for that project. But you will be looking at most of north downtown uh, from Alder uh, North that will be reconstructed through the Sewer Basin and road projects uh, in roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to $12 million in projects. So we are very excited um, for this moving forward um, and just uh, the staff work that went into this over the last 12 months I am just excited in how much work and how the, the public works and engineering staff carry themselves through this and, and the amount of work that they put into this and uh, they need to be commended for this. Absolutely this so, is exactly the best way a city could do these projects yes. and it's just amazing to see uh, projects being done with things terms like 90 percent grant 10 percent loan or funding from other partners this terminology is exciting and it's good and uh, credit to you too craig because you spearhead this stuff and you well, look for it and you've done a great job more appropriately um, my staff who did the majority of the lifting on this one. Uh, Logan Brady, our associate engineer, uh, Brooke Kiltz, our projects and purchasing coordinator, uh, Clinton Leppard, uh, our engineer tech, and Bob Tauger, our consultant city engineer, um, did most of the lifting on this one. So they need to be commended for this and, and they did a fabulous job putting this together and getting this out the door and getting acceptance for this. So. We're hoping that this is a big change for Shelton moving forward in a positive way and look forward to uh, bidding that and getting the construction started. I predict it's going to be a very dusty summer this year, so everybody hang in there. <laughs> and there will be some congestion and, and some road closures oh, yeah. periodically, but I think in the end it will all be worth it. What wonderful progress. Thank you. You're welcome. Next we have a discussion about the city council update so the election has not been certified but as i mentioned last week we've been in communication with a number of different parties who are anticipating the certification of a successful proposition one campaign and with that anticipation the county's interested in finding out what the options are moving forward so we wanted to give you an update on the information that we know as of right now i believe in the petition the request was made or the uh, proclamation was made that the special election in February and the special election in April will be the primary and the general dates. We are still working through that with both the state and with the county. In this case, the county is going to have to do some work regardless of if it's then or if it ends up having to be pushed until the August, November date, but we're still working to try to fulfill the request that was made in the petition. So we wanted to give you that update. And then next, we can talk a little bit about what that would look like in terms of a timeline. So you see that on your briefing sheet. If there is to be a primary in February and, and the next special election in April for a general, you would see election certification on the 28th of this month. We would attempt to adopt a resolution by the 11th of December. The 15th is the deadline for us to get the resolution to the county to put something on the February ballot. 
in that case, I would anticipate that the county would then do a filing period immediately following that as soon as they possibly can. And then we would see that filing period, whether that's three days or five days, we would see that general election in April and the primary would precede that in February. And then we would anticipate that the uh, in May of this year, that would likely be the start date, but that's something that we'll know in the next coming weeks. Next thing to look at are a couple things that we, you won't determine because they're already determined by statute. One is that candidates will file for specific positions. So just assuming that there are positions one through four, position one, position two, position three, and so on. Each candidate would file for each a specific position as opposed to what a couple people have asked about, whether or not there would just be a large group and the top four get in, it'll be specific positions. That ties into the second predetermined point. The term lengths will need to be staggered so that one person matches up with the mayor and commissioner of finance term currently, and that person would be the lowest vote getting winning candidate. The top three vote getting candidates, or top three winners would get the long term to match up with the current commissioner of public works. Any questions on those two things? I'm looking forward to working with the seven person commission or council, forgive me. Okay. A couple of decision points that will need to be made and I've included a page that looks like this. Just for your reference, this isn't something that we utilize now, it's something the county utilizes for congressional races. But one of the things that you'll need to discuss in the next few weeks is how you'll want to provide county information about uh, districts versus at-large seats. Throughout, excuse me, so the, the three options you'll have are seven district seats, seven at-large seats, or a combination of both, in, in which case the, the easiest one that we can find to get to would be four district seats, potentially using the current city precincts with three at-large seats. And you can see those here, they're listed on the front, you see the downtown three, you have Olympic View, downtown Angleside and Hillcrest. And on the back, there's a list of registered voters in those four districts. Like I mentioned, those aren't precincts that we currently use. Those are used by the county during the, uh, con the 10th congressional district races. Questions on districts versus at-large positions? Not at this time. Does that decision have to be made prior to, it can't be changed later? It can be changed for the, for the election. We'll have to make the decision for that election, but if there's not enough time and that large seats need, need to be used, at some point we could switch to districts. We asked that question when we met with the county last week. Okay, because it might, it might be nice to have the rest of the commissioners or the council members involved in that decision? Yeah, I think this is one of the sticking points as we look at this. The, the actual composition for ballots and for making sure that everything gets out appropriately may take a little while to put together mm -hmm. and trying to get this done before December may be tough for that, that component. The second one is council member salary and that's something that we would recommend that is decided before we move forward as well so that people know what they're going to be running for. We've included a couple breakdown discussions here. So you see this one and you also see this one. The first one is a analysis of what other council manager cities provide in terms of average annual salary. And you'll see a discrepancy here, a difference here between in council manager cities between council member salaries and mayor salaries. We provided those two for the entire population of council manager cities and then also council manager cities in our range according to the AWC salary chart which is 7,500 people up to 14,999. And then we also provided what that difference is and as you can see on this, uh, throughout the state council manager cities pay their mayor roughly 40% more than council members. Then we also provided the average council salary for all cities in our population range regardless of form of government. We provided a salary example, so if we're using that all cities number as a guidepost and then we round it up, you'd be looking at $6,000, adding 40% on for 
the mayor's salary, and then we provided three different scenarios down below. The first one is what currently is utilized, and so that's a base salary of 15,600, meeting composition, or excuse me, compensation of $70 per meeting, maxes out at 9,800, so the current maximum salary is 25,400, bringing the total salary budget for commissioners at the current point to $76,200. And then down below, we provided two different scenarios. One is leaving the, the two current positions as they are and moving the other four people, excuse me, five people to that $6,000 or whatever you determine with the additional for the person that would be chosen as mayor. In that situation, there would be a total change of adding $7,000 onto the budget. We've discussed this before that currently commissioners can't change their own salary, but there is one component that I don't think has been discussed, which is commissioners do not have to report the $70 meeting fee. So if commissioners chose to save the city money, we could actually save uh, $12,600 if we just paid the base salary and commissioners did not choose to collect $70 per meeting. So we provided those as well as information on all the other cities throughout the state and noted council managers. And then we also received information about health benefits. So on the, this page, you'll see information from all the council manager cities throughout the state that provided responses. We have four here that didn't respond. So you can see that out of, looks like 52 that did respond, not including our own. You have 14 cities that provide some sort of health insurance for their council members, 34 that do not, and four that didn't answer. Amongst council manager cities that are roughly our size, none of them provide health insurance. Five, excuse me, zero mentioned that they provide it, five do not provide it, and one did not answer. So we've left that information for you as well. Any questions about council member compensation? We just got this today this information and so I will be mulling it over. Thank you. But there's a lot of information here. There is a lot of information to put together. Yeah, thank you. Third point is uh, it would be beneficial as well to people that are running if we could determine what the meeting requirements would be of council members. We're going to do some research this week about what other cities do from what we could tell during a quick, state, quick scan. Most cities do two meetings a month with committee meetings in addition to those. And that's one of the things that I know I've talked with the mayor about potentially moving our meetings to Tuesday meetings so that we can use this room exclusively. But we'll look to bring some more information uh, back on both number three and number four, which is council member committee. So we're hoping that over the next couple of weeks we can get these things answered. And what we're asking now is as we move forward and determine whether or not we can do a February, March uh, election that if we can go with that, that we need to have these decisions made by our, your meeting on the 11th, preferably. If not, we need to hold a special meeting before the 15th to get all these questions answered. December 11th. December, yes. Okay. The sooner the better. Yes. So will those be open public meetings as we're making these decisions? Yeah, unless we have to do a special meeting, in which okay. case we'll be open, we'll do it at our regular meetings. Okay, and if we do have a special meeting, it would still be open to the public? As far as I know. Okay. Does that conclude your report? That is everything I have. Yes. Thank you very much. Our next meeting will be November 27th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. This meeting is adjourned.